is Marvel Studios doomed? Now we're going to talk a lot about what's going on at Marvel Studios. Apparently, the mainstream media has gotten an idea that Marvel's in trouble and they need to get things reorganized. I am the man you may know as Z from Our Reviews Will Kill You. And some of this news you may have heard, some of it you may have not heard. But if you'd like to hear more, give us a like and subscribe. We appreciate it. But let's go right into the article. There's a lot to cover here, and I could talk an hour about it, but I won't. I will keep it brief. This is a giant article, as far as like mainstream media goes, from Variety. It pretty much sums up everything that's going on at Marvel's right now that's a problem and why they have to retool and re do everything and they don't explicitly say maybe it's time for a reboot but they do mention it and i noticed in the comments they're like well there's nothing new in here yeah because we've been reporting on this stuff for the past like three years but now somebody has put it all together and put it into the shill media the people who are supposed to protect these companies Well, now it's being said out loud, which means that they're already way ahead of whatever they say here. So the article starts um, mostly talking about the legal scandal of Jonathan Majors and Kang. We're not quite done Loki, but apparently Loki's supposed to set up the next thing. Good Lord, can we ever not set up the next thing? Uh, but what's kind of funny about this is they uh, apparently there was a gathering in Palm Springs and executives had discussed backup plans, including pivoting to Dr. Doom, which would be so much easier to pivot to Dr. Doom because if you know anything about Dr. Doom, you don't see the man's face. He's just a dude with a mask. He could be anybody. I'm pretty sure most people don't know that Josh Brolin did not play Thanos in the first couple appearances. It wasn't until he started like actually talking that they had cast Josh Brolin. They were waiting to make sure nothing happened. Um, so the, as they go, uh, this is one top deal maker, and they got a direct quote, Marvel is truly effed with the whole Kang angle, and they haven't had an opportunity to rewrite until very recently because of the strike. But I don't see a path to how they move forward with him. I mean, just point it out there. Like, every Kang's already died. Who cares if it's a slightly different (laughs) Kang and they recast him? Like, why not? Just do it. So besides that, they have a ton of bad press, and they're worried about the November release of the Marvels right around the corner. It's only a couple weeks away, which has been plagued with reshoots and is likely to underwhelm at the box office. That's not even... A little bit of how bad it's going to do. And you're talking about a company that had like 10 straight years of unbelievable success. And now they've just painted themselves into a corner. And you can see how, you know, if you think about Miss Marvel and how the Marvels, like, does anybody even know anything about uh, Monica Rambeau and Photon or Miss Marvel. I watched both of those series that they're from, WandaVision and from Miss Marvel. Watched every single second of it, but I doubt anybody else did. I'm the only one who's doing it, giving them their ratings. Well, it's gonna re- Marvel is going to release on November 10th. It cost, they're saying it cost $250 million to make. That is bananas. It's not even called Captain Marvel 2. It's called The Marvels. And it's supposed to track to open between 70 and 80 million. I don't know it's even going to do that much. So that's a giant bomb just sitting there waiting to happen. Stuff I didn't know was that Nia DaCosta, the director, she uh, already started moving on to a new project, a Tessa Thompson drama called Hedda. That's real weird. If you this is the quote, a source says, if you're directing a $250, $250 million movie, it's kind of weird for the director to leave with a few months to go. Like post production wasn't done and she already moved to London to do something else. Little weird. All right. And it's been it's been flip-flopped several times. The release date was moved back twice and swapped with Quantumania. We all know how great Quantumania did. And it's already been public test screen, and it's not getting great reviews. Oh, shocking. 
they're also talking about the visual effects battles that have been going on with uh, how terrible the, the CGI has been. They were saying in Quantum Mania, there were at least 10 scenes where the visual effects had been added at the last minute and were out of focus. He said, it was insane. This is a direct quote. I've never seen something in, like that in my entire career. Everyone was talking about it. Even the kids of executives were talking about it. Yeah, well, when you have a giant-faced uh, dude who looks, Modoc, who looks absolutely like a joke, why, why, that, that, was, that was ridiculous. Just to, to look so, it was jarring to see it. Uh, so they're saying that, the, you know, they were still doing CGI stuff, I guess, 11 days before the premiere on a 200-something million dollar movie. Uh, the four, They were getting 14-hour days, no overtime. The visual effects workers voted unanimously to unionize in September. Very scary, right? At least for Marvel Studios. Uh, they also said that this eventually caused, you know, this is one of the reasons why they dropped the guillotine on a top executive who's been there since, you know, pretty close to the beginning. Uh, Victoria Alonso got, got trashed, right? They're saying that She-Hulk, the garbage trash fire that was She-Hulk, where is it in the article? I think it said they cost $30 million, no, $25 million an episode. An episode, a single She-Hulk episode costing $25 million. That's more than the final season episode of Game of Thrones. <laughs> so, and look, we all know that Game of Thrones sucked. Is that what you're chasing? Which one's going to suck harder? Unbelievable, right? Unbelievable. Costing She-Hulk, costing $25 million for that garbage. And what are you going to do with it? Absolutely nothing. It's trash, absolute trash. Um, they're all a big book came out too called "The Reign of Marvel Studios," which was dropping a bunch of stuff. So this is kind of collating all of this information into everything. And they're saying that because Marvel put too much content out there, uh, the the brand's quality suffered because you can only put out so many projects out there that seem undercooked. Speaking of which. We're talking about the, they also talk about the Blade reboot with Mahershala Ali signed on, you know, Oscar winner. It's gone through at least five writers, two directors, and one shutdown six weeks before production. Uh, there are rumors that two time Oscar winner Ali was about to walk from the project. I even heard from other places that he was annoyed that he felt like he was the fourth main character that it was about a bunch of women and him wanting having to learn lessons or some nonsense. It's like, what? what is this Blade? Not that... They already made three Blade movies. Three of them are, you know, one's good, two's really good, three's... It's all right, but it ain't trash. It ain't him learning a bunch of lessons. So let, let, it's not that hard to make a Blade movie, but somehow they screwed it up. They are even talking about reviving Robert Downey Jr.'s Iron Man and Scarlett Johansson's Black Widow. What? They're going to bring back dead heroes just to, you know, and look, uh, they're saying Downey's Jr., Downey Jr.'s upfront salary for Iron Man 3 was $25 million. Good, I mean, he'll, uh, he'll do it for the money. I'm sure anybody will do it for the money. And they like the characters, but cheese and crackers. Holy cow. And then they go back to the Kang thing, where his legal troubles, they might recast him. They don't know what to do. Um, they have problems. Uh, they're saying that they're hoping... They, they, what, what, here's, what, here's what I would say they should do. This would be my opinion. You put the Avengers away. Just put them away. Make smaller movies and shows on the cheap for, for characters that we need to learn and enjoy if nobody seems to remember this but the avengers are like sea level characters like nobody cared about iron man or thor the x men is big time big time people love the x men reboot everything with the x men and the fantastic 4 
put the Avengers to sleep for like 10 years. Don't do anything with any Avengers. And then you can reboot the whole thing. New actors. And redo something different. Try something completely different. Might be good. Might be good for the soul. You know what I'm saying? Because the X-Men, you have like 10 years worth of stuff just with the X-Men. You have so many iconic villains, although hopefully you don't screw them all up. But I don't know. Is 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 there, Are they doomed? Is this the end? Is this the end of Marvel Studios? Is Kevin Feige washed up? Like... Can he recalibrate? Is he spread too? You know, they're saying he's too. He spread too thin. Uh, Jason Squire, professor emeritus at the USC School of Cinematic Arts and host of the Movie Business Podcast, says Kevin Feige is the Babe Ruth of movie executives, and Marvel's the most profitable track record in movie history, no question. So, can the Babe Ruth come back? I don't know. Can the Bambino? What do you guys think? Do you think Marvel's toast? Do you want to see Doctor Doom? Do you want them to save him for Fantastic Four? Do you even care at this point? I mean, I still care because at heart, I'm still a comic book guy, comic book nerd. I like those things. I like to see those movies. I like to see quality movies. I don't want to see Garbaggio, but I don't think the genre is totally, totally dead. I think people have lost interest, but you can redo things on... Th you don't need a $100 million budget. I mean, that's cheap. <laughs> compared to you don't need 200 million dollar budget for the marvel sounds like a waste to me so or 250 million dollar budget what do you even talk like just try a 30 million dollar budget to introduce somebody small that we've never seen before i can't imagine you know i know visual effects cost a lot but you could do a movie i feel like you could do a wolverine movie on a 30 million dollar budget you just could if you wanted to it would make a lot of money you don't have to, like, all that you have to do is put in a dude holding claws, right? <laughs> Chopping people up. Not that hard. Weapon X. There you go. $30 million. Horror movie. Weapon X. And then you just figure out that at the end, spoiler, it's Wolverine. Oh, my God. You know, people in the woods, Canadian woods, getting chopped up by a monster. Monster turns out to be a broken Weapon X. You could do it, folks. <laughs> That's just me. That's just my idea. Thanks for hanging in there. Check out our full-length audio podcast, and we live stream it on here, YouTube, 7.30 p.m., Friday nights, Eastern Standard Time, or check it out on iTunes, Stitcher, Spotify, all those places and more. We have memberships. Join the, mem join the team. Get your doctorate. Get your bachelor's of orkdom. You, too, can be as educated as we are. And we can also do super chats and stuff like that. So we've been monetized. So thank you. We love all y'all, but I am on to the next one. Ah.